See, this is by David Cohen and Chuck Machine, co-star analytics. Demand for apartments has hit record levels across the United States. So the last article we were talking about just about the Sun Belt and the mid-sized markets, but this says across the whole United States, lending to unprecedented rent growth since the, since the start of 2021. Rent growth has been more even more pronounced in some large Sun Belt cities where rents have been well below the national index for quite some time, but are now close to above or the national average. So why? Why were they below the average and why are they have increased now? It says the run up in rents is being driven by exceptionally strong demand, okay, which has outpaced net deliveries in most markets across the country, driving vacancies to historic lows. So since the high demand, these vacancies are going low. And when the vacancy goes low, what happens? People build. New household formation has pushed the U.S. multifamily vacancy rate to 4.9%, which is well below the 20-year historical average of 6.8%. Overall, apartment vacancies in Sunbelt cities are traditionally higher than the national average, as most cities across the region lack that type of land constraints and zoning regulations that prevent large-scale new supply in the East and the West Coast gateway markets. But the pandemic and the surge in apartment demand felt across the Sun Belt have driven vacancies below historical norms in every large southern metro area. Among a selection of Sun Belt cities with more than 50,000 apartment units, overall vacancy rates are now lower than the 20-year historical average in all 20 metro areas. Check out this chart. This is Memphis to Miami. The blue indicates where current vacancy is. And the orange line up here indicates where, where historical, historically it's been. There's a big delta in between every one of these metros of historical vacancy and newfound vacancy because of the higher demand in these areas. Major Sunbelt markets such as Dallas, Fort Worth, and Atlanta are historically at 8.5 vacancy markets. 8.5 vacancy markets. I can tell you as being a commercial real estate appraiser myself who's dealing with multifamily and developments every day, I've never put a stabilized vacancy at 8.5. It's always been 5%. Now it's 6%, maybe 5%, maybe for some loss to credit or something, but it's 8.5 vacancy markets. I've never modeled ever in my career. That's such that high of vacancy. But both of those metro areas boast vacancy rates around 6% now. Mm -hmm. It's a similar story in South Florida, where vacancy rates are below 4%. Well, that makes sense, right? I live in South Florida. I underwrite commercial deals in South Florida. Why would I ever put 8.5%? When the facts show right here, South Florida, where vacancy rates below 4% in both Miami and Fort Lauderdale are far below historical norms. And those are my areas that I work. That's where my specialty lays. Vacancy rates are closest to the historical norms of markets where new supply expansions have been the largest. Fast-growing mid-sized cities such as Charlotte, North Carolina, Nashville, Tennessee, and Austin, Texas have all seen their multifamily inventories expand by more than 4% over the past 12 months compared to 1.7 inventory expansion nationwide in 2021. So it's more than doubled the nationwide uh, expansion. In the smaller Charleston, South Carolina market, that growth was even more dramatic, resulting in a 6% inventory expansion. Regardless, vac regardless, vacancy rates remain below historical average. Here's another chart. The blue is the 12-month delivered as a percentage of inventory, and the orange is an indication of under construction as a percentage of inventory. Back to the article. Looking forward, cities with the most properties under construction as a percentage of inventory are likely to see their vacancy rates rise closer to or above their respective historical average in the near term. That's mere supply and demand. More than 10% of current apartment inventory is under construction in Austin, Nashville, and Miami. In places such as Charlotte, Orlando, Phoenix, Raleigh, and Fort Lauderdale are not far behind at 8 to 9 percent. Even if recent demand trends persist, this amount of supply will lead to rising vacancies and more modest rent growth in the coming quarters 
in these metro areas. Larger markets such as Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, and Atlanta have more moderate supply pipelines as a percentage of the inventory. But all three rank among the top of the country in terms of units underway. Among smaller cities, Charlton's growth is an outliner. Construction activity has yet to ramp up such cities as Memphis, Tennessee, North Fork, Virginia, and Birmingham, Alabama, all of which have a modest of 2% of inventory underway. So the top markets have 10%, not far behind 8 to 9. Down here, Memphis, Tennessee, North Fork, Virginia, and Birmingham, Alabama at 2%. I wouldn't be surprised if you see more development in those three locations. Thank mm-hmm. you.